Okay, so this session is called Organic Creativity. So what we'll be doing is we'll be using nature as an inspiration for creating designs. Okay, so this, this is the session outline. What we'll be doing is we'll understand how nature inspires people to make designs. And then what we'll do is we'll have this exercise where we mix and match and then we'll make stuff. Okay, and then based on what we've learned today, you can also use this session and use the knowledge that you learn to actually create your own nature or organic inspired objects okay so what you'll need is i hope you guys have your 3d modeling software ready your pens and your know, paper and pencil if you want to draw or sketch if you want then we'll be doing a lot of google image search as well later when we are doing some research okay and then i want you guys to keep your mind open and to visualize and see all the things that we are all the pictures that i'll be showing you guys okay so we'll see how nature inspires designers so i want you guys to actually go onto this website okay it's actually a Padlet board. In the Padlet board, you see we have three exercises. So what we'll do right now is we'll start with the first one. Okay, I want you guys to actually look at the slides and then type all the answers in the Padlet board. Okay, the first exercise is I want you guys to identify what inspires these designs. So this is the first one. So I want you guys to actually type it in the Padlet board and roughly mention what do you think is inspired by this bowl. What does this bowl look like? Okay, you don't have to, you can just take a guess, okay? You don't have to be very accurate with it. You can just, when you look at it, what do you think it looks like? You just type it down, okay? So the next image is this. So just type down, what do you think this is? What does it look like? All these should be quite simple, but the following next exercises will be a bit tougher, okay? Next picture. Okay, next picture. Okay, these are the answers. Okay, I hope you guys have actually typed all these things down. Yes, okay, you guys have done quite well. You guys have actually listed down a lot of different objects that looks like that you think is inspired by this, okay? So now we move on to exercise two. Okay, so on the same palette board, I want you guys to also look at the pictures over here. Okay, this one is a bit tough. What do you think this looks like? I want you guys to type it down. Like a spinal cord. Correct. So it's actually taking inspiration from the fish bones, okay, the individual parts of the fish bones. So it looks exactly like that. Okay, so this is one way of using bones to actually design objects also. Okay, so the next one is actually a honeycomb, which is inspired by the beehive. So the next one is going to be quite interesting. Okay, this one is obviously, you know, it's a bird nest. Okay, this one is also very straightforward. It's actually the butterfly, shape of a butterfly that use it to make the the legs, the table. Okay, this one is also the shell. Okay, the snail shell. So these are some of the things that are actually in the previous images. So now let's go on to exercise three. Okay, in the same palette board, look for the exercise three column. What do you think this looks like? Okay, there's no right or wrong answers. Okay, I want you guys to just make a guess. Okay, so if you guys haven't figured it out, the answer is actually the heart. Okay, it looks like a human heart, but it's actually much more simplified, okay? So our hearts have a lot of like veins and arteries that go out of it, but for this one, they actually simplified it. Okay, so they use the shape of a heart to actually make a container like this. Okay, so now the next one. This is actually a pair of tongs. Okay, so I want you to take a look at the tongs carefully and what is it resembling? What does it look like to you? Okay, just type all your answers in the Padlet box as well. Okay, so the answer is actually bird's beak. So this is how you actually can use a part of an animal to actually design an object. So, so in this instance, they're actually using the bird's beak. In the previous picture, you saw that they actually use the shape of the heart to actually make container. Okay, so this is another pattern which I'm sure you guys have seen before. It's called the Ronoi pattern. Okay, so this is also another very commonly used pattern in design. It's actually a form of a cell, a cell structure. Okay, so this, this pattern is actually found in nature as well. Okay, so this is where you can actually see these kind of patterns. You can see on the insect wings, you can see on the giraffe, you can see on the when you close up of a leaf, and also on the ground, okay, when the ground is very dry. Okay, so all these patterns are actually derived from nature. So a lot of the patterns that you see, all the designs that you see in the market, right? A lot of them are also are really inspired by nature. And I'm sure you guys have actually seen all these phone stands before. So you can see that the stand actually looks like an octopus, it looks like a squid. So this is where they get inspiration from. They use the shape and the detail of the tentacles to actually make the, the legs of the 
phone stand. So these are some of the patterns that which we have identified and some of the parts of animals that designers have used to actually create all these designs. Okay, so the idea about getting inspiration from nature is that there's so many things. You have the form, you have the shape, and you have the texture that can be used and design. Okay, so in the previous slides, we see that human organs can be used, animal body parts can be used, the animal skin patterns can be used, flower petals, even the fruit skins as well. So there's many things that you can use from nature to create your designs. Okay, the next thing is what I want you guys to do is called shape associations. Okay, so I'll give you guys about 10 minutes to actually mix and match some of these things from the left and from the right. Okay, if you look at the padlet board, there's actually a column over there. So I want you guys to actually type down some of the things that you guys want to use to actually create your design. So just go on to the padlet board right now. Okay, if you look at the column called let's mix and match and make, I want you to pick one of it from the list at the top and one of it from the bottom. Okay, so first thing I want you to do is to pick one subject from this list, okay? You can use the shape of a flower, the leaf, the leaf pattern, the shape of a fruit, okay, the shape of a tree, or textures of the rock, sea waves, insect wing or anything, okay? Just type down what you want to make, what is the subject that you want to use to make your object. Okay, you can choose more than one. Okay, you see in that column, right, there's actually one Pick one subject from this list and then at the bottom, there's also another subject from the list. Okay, so I want you guys to actually just pick any subject that you want over here to design your object. So if you want the object to look like a fruit, look like a flower, you can just type it down inside there. Okay, so the next exercise right, that I want you to do is also to explain in detail. So you see, I've, I've actually on this column, I've actually explained in detail what I will use. Okay, so Meredith, if you actually wanted to use a fish scale pattern, but there are so many types of fishes in the... So if you can go online and look for the, the type of fish and then you look at the kind of scales, look at the patterns of the fish scales and then you can decide what is the exact fish that you're going to use. Okay? Yeah, so different fish have different scale patterns and scale sizes also. So you can go online and search for that. So once you have done, then you can actually type it inside this column over here. Like for me, right, what I want to do is I want to make a pomelo shape. Okay, and then I want to make a cicada inspired vase. Okay, so I'm going to use the shape of a cicada to actually make a vase. Okay, so that's, those are actually my two ideas that I want to make. Okay, so they are both inspired by nature. And I specifically know that it is a fruit shape or fruit inspired pot and an insect inspired vase. Okay. But for me right now, I've made it made it very precise. Okay, I said I wanted the, I wanted my pot to look like a pomelo, and I want my vase to look like a cicada. Let's see if you want to use you want to make a pattern out of a fish scale, for example. What you can do is you can just create one exact one one scale, and then in Tinkercad you can actually select and then duplicate multiple copies. Then you can align, align, align. I know that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's one way of doing it. Okay, you don't have to use fish scale, okay? You can use like animal skin, you can use many things. You can use the bird's feathers, you can use reptile scales also. So a lot of uh, animals have a lot of all these patterns on their body. So you can also use that. You can use zebra, you can use cheetah, you, know, you can use giraffe, you can use so many kind of animals. Okay, you don't have to use fish scales. So yeah, there are like so many types of animals with all these interesting skin patterns. So you can just go to Google and just search and then you can see something that, you know, might look unique on the design that you're planning to make. Okay, if you have found the pattern that you want to make, I can, you can actually start to open up your Tinkercad or whatever software that you're using and then try to create the shape based on the images that you find, that you have found. Okay, if you need help looking for some images, just let me know. I can help you to search for a better picture of whatever scale or pattern that you're looking for. Okay, so if you are ready, guys, you guys can actually go and start to model already. Okay. Okay, I'll be giving you guys about maybe half an hour to 45 minutes to actually make some stuff. If you have any questions, you can just raise it over here. You can share screen with us and then we can help you if you have any issues. So I'll be using Fusion 360 to do it. Okay, so let me make my Omolo pot maybe.
now I have more faces, what I can do is I can do this. Okay. Then I modify and I scale it. Okay, I'll try to make something like a teapot. Wait, uh, Kenneth, how do you make the pipe? Okay, I go and create. I created a sketch. You want me to show you again? Yeah. Okay, so 
if you are in free form mode, right, you just click on this button here called create sketch. Okay, so I want to create the sketch on this plane. Okay, then once I click on it, I can use this fit point spline to actually create the read the sketch so i can actually click onto the edge so the spline will the sketch will actually be pasted on the object itself okay so when i finish sketch i select the spline i go to create and select type then it becomes a type so i use smooth display then it can become a a handle like that Let's play around with the settings here. In diameter, maybe I put 15. Maybe I put 10. Then, okay. So once my sketch is done. So yeah, this is my simple looking pot that looks like a pomelo, but maybe I will need to change some of this to look make it look a bit fatter okay, so for my bottom I want it to be flat because if it's curved it cannot sit on it cannot be it cannot stand on the table so I select all this I go modify and I flatten okay so now it's flattened so now it looks like a funny looking pot but down okay, here I will need to make a hole Okay, Ian, I can show you a trick. Uh. You hold shift and you hold the middle mouse button, you can actually rotate the view like this. Okay, hold shift and click on the middle mouse button so you can rotate. Okay, instead of going having to press this button and doing this all the time, you can use the hotkey shift and middle mouse button. Okay, so you can rotate your model like this if you are doing modeling. Okay, so I'm done with this. Okay, so this is my bus that I was doing just now. Okay, so this is my second object that I was doing. So it's a Skada bus. I've uploaded my formula port into the padlet board. So if you are done with whatever you have making, you can just post it here. Let's say for example, right, I got this, uh, let's say, jug of water here. So this this shape is pretty much pretty easy to, to model. Uh, but once you try to do things which are more like nature inspired or what, what I used to call it biomorphic, right? Uh, then things get a bit difficult already because the things in nature have although they seem pretty irregular or very organic they have a certain thought process be behind it lah. so uh, sometimes it's very very difficult to just replicate replicate what we find in nature because uh, to, to me to, to, to me I always feel like uh, there's all, uh, like, like designs that we find in nature it's also part of intelligent design now. I mean, whether or not you guys believe in intelligent design. So sometimes, sometimes a lot of these things, oh, super <laughs> difficult to replicate. Yeah, so you must really try to understand why certain things uh, flow in a certain way or not also. So for yeah. example, one thing you, must also, you, you guys can also think about, how come you always think that, how come we always see that trees, right? Most of the time, they grow upwards. How come trees grow against gravity? They never grow towards gravity. So that's something that that uh, sometimes people also try to ask ourselves. What 
why does nature do things in certain ways? Yeah, and then maybe once you, once we are able to appreciate this kind of, of things, then uh, it can also help us design better. Yeah. yeah. So, maybe later I can also show you guys also, uh, if there's time, I'll show you guys some stuff that my professor did before, which may not be, uh, because whatever, whatever Kenneth is doing now, right? Um, uh, this whole thing about uh, organic creativity is is this whole realm of of, of, of things called uh, biomimetics. So there's there's biomimicry and there's biomimetics. And then late, later, if there's time, I'll, I'll, I'll explain. I can explain what's the difference between uh, both of them. So in school, also when I studied, we also use nature as one of the themes for our character design. Nature is also a very large theme in not just product design but also in arts where I studied. Uh. So one of the idea was to use nature and then create a character out of it. So, but they gave us a challenge uh, to not make a character, you know, just, okay, a character is inspired by nature, inspired by trees. So you do not just create a male or female figure and just put leaves on it. That's not how it works. Uh. You also have to think about the design. Okay, how does he blend with nature? What is his camouflage abilities? You know, how does he, you know, shape you no know, he can camouflage how does he like you know morph himself into a shape of a tree and stuff like that so it's not so simple as just oh just put some leaves on the character and then he's inspired by nature it's not so simple as that so we actually have to think a lot about personality and study the how nature works also so that we know uh, how we can actually draw some kind of like properties of nature that we can incorporate into our character's personality as well so it's not so straightforward so there's a lot of thought and research going behind using nature to create anything. Okay, so this whole idea about biomimicry and biomimetics. So basically biomimicry is taking something and just copy it wholesale. So just now, for example, um, when we look at the, when we look at just now, uh, Kenneth showed a heart, you know, that's I think it's, it's used as a decanter for, let's say, alcohol or spirits or wine or whatsoever. Uh, that is what uh, we call, that's an example of biomimicry where we try to uh, merely copy the exterior or the appearance of um, something. Okay, that's fine in nature. Uh, so let, let's say, for example, what I did with the coaster, that's considered like uh, mimicry where you, you just find the wave patterns and you just like um, uh, copy it wholesale. Okay, then biomimetics. Okay, biomimetics is a harder one. Biomimetics is, is about understanding why nature does it that way. Uh, so um, it could be even like, let's say when we look at the heart, why is the heart uh, divi divided into four parts? Okay, and why does, why is the, why is, is like say this ventricle or whatsoever, aorta or whatsoever, like here and there. Okay, understand why we think uh, the human heart was designed that way. And then using that knowledge to uh, put it into your design. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you an example of biomimetics. Okay, if you all have been into, into Vivita, right, you all have seen this on my robot. Okay, this thing, okay. When you look at this, this, this thing is called fin ray. When you look at this, it doesn't look like a fish at all. It doesn't look like a, like a fish fin. Okay, this whole triangle. So like for example, this fin over here with all the lines inside, when we look at it, uh, we won't think of a fish um, straight away or a fish fin straight away. The reason is because this actually is something microscopic. That means you cannot see unless you use a magnifying uh, a microscope and look at the structure inside the, the fish, okay? So, um, it, it, when you're, so you can see over here, this fin ray uh, bionic toy thing, you see, you can, you can see how the, uh, the, the way it works is being used in a certain application, like wrapping itself around a ball. And also like, I guess if y'all come to VV Stop again, y'all can see the, the robot that I made where I implemented this uh, fin ray for grasping balls okay because the thing about this idea is that when fishes swim right when if it, it, it swims you know usually when you press something when you when let's say i'm pressing my finger right it would 
we call the word deflect. That means it would bend away from the force. So my force is going on this way and it bends away. But if you look at the the, the fish, when you when you have a force acting on it, it actually bends towards the force. And that's what helps the fish swim properly actually. Uh, and that makes not say swim properly, but it makes the swimming of a fish effective and optimal. Okay, so uh, these are the kind of things that that we can learn from nature because nature doesn't do anything in vain. There's always a reason why nature does it. And actually nature is very smart in a way that it, it eliminates things that don't really work well. That's why we have this whole idea of like the, the, the survival of the fittest, right? So this is something that in a way over time, fishes have, uh, have developed. Uh, for those who believe in evolution and for but for those who believe in intelligent design this is how uh, fishes have been uh, have been uh, created la. okay so um, yeah so this sometimes this is these are the kind of things that are not so obvious to us by our naked eyes but as we study them then we know oh this is how actually fishes swim and why they can swim so well yeah so this this is just an example of biomimetics as compared to biomimetry yeah. If you want to know more about these kind of things, I, 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 I can share with you other resources now. We can end the session now. Okay, so that's it. Bye.